Hello and welcome to the last episode of Maker Hanger. My name is Lucas Weekly, and today we're going to be covering the modifications that you can make to the Maker Trainer to make it both fly better and do more things. So let's get started. The first modification is putting a rudder on your plane. This gives you an extra level of control and allows you to taxi on the ground. So let's jump in. Okay, first you're going to need your rudder. Now I've already downloaded the plans. I've cut them out and recovered the rudder. It's the same as before, only now we have a control surface over here. So once you have this done, you're going to get your plane and we're going to slowly and carefully take off the tail. Now we can do this with an X-Acto knife right here. Just be careful you don't want to damage the elevator. Add some reinforcing inside the elevator because it did get kind of taken off. Okay, now you're going to take your new rudder and put it in place of the old one. Then after the rudder's glued, then you can take another servo, slide it through the hole in the tape, just cut that out again, and pop the servo in the hole. Then we're gonna hook up the linkage, just like we did with the elevator. Okay, so now I got the rudder all hooked up. It's over on this side, and then it goes up to the servo in the front. Now we're going to test it out and uh, program the radio for it. Like I said before, the rudder is this stick right here, side to side. You just wanna set it up just like before with the, all the other control surfaces where you make sure that it's moving the correct directions. How it works is you take the plane facing away from you and then the rudder should match your movements. So obviously this one is going opposite of it. So we're gonna go into the menu. We're gonna scroll down to setup list, go to reverse. We're gonna find rudder and reverse it. It should match your stick. Just make sure your rudder is straight when it's in neutral and that's just bending the push rod to make sure that it is all positioned properly. That'll make sure that you're not crashing when you take off. The next modification is putting landing gear on the plane. This allows you to take off and land from the ground. Okay, so here are the parts you're gonna need for the landing gear. The second sheet of the modification page, uh, you're gonna need some pliers. For the landing gear itself, you're gonna need some like thicker wire. It's the same music wire as before, only thicker. Uh, it doesn't bend as easily. You're gonna need some tires, and then you're gonna need a way to hold on the tires. Now you can bend the ends of the wires. That'll hold it on pretty well, but I'm gonna use these little collets, and they have a set screw inside of them, and they go over the wire, and then they one goes on either end of the tire, and then it holds it in place. So let's start working. The way this wire bending diagram works is you hold up the wire over to this side. You're gonna bend it according to here to this angle. Then you're gonna bend it here. Match up the angles. And then when you get to this point right here, you're gonna flip it, come over to this side, bend here first to make this V. And then once you get back over here, flip it back around and then finish off the rest of the landing gear. And now that's your landing gear wire. So you can just fine tune the angles, make sure that everything's okay. And then we're gonna get our tires and slide them on, make sure that they fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide a collet on first, go all the way to the end and then tighten it down. Do the same on both sides Then slide a wheel on, put another collet, make sure they're not pinched too hard and then tighten it down. Okay, once you have your wheels installed, just make sure that they roll really freely and they're not binding. Now I got these tires at my local hobby store as well as the collets, but you can make your own tires out of foam if you wanted to. And then you can also just bend up the tips of these to hold on the tires. So now we're gonna attach this to the airplane. So we first need to do a couple measurements. We're gonna go two and a half inches back from the crease on the back of the plane. So let me mark this. Two and a half is right here. And we're gonna measure that on both sides. This is where we're gonna place our landing gear. Okay, now we're gonna get our landing gear and then we're gonna place 
them on the mark with the triangle facing forward. Okay, now that we have this here, we're just going to hot glue it in place. Okay, so to help it get a little bit more surface area, we're gonna add some popsicle sticks across these two joints going like this. I'm just gonna hold them down until they dry. Okay, and now we're gonna add a lot of hot glue around all the joints to reinforce them. Right after we do this, we're gonna cover it with duct tape. I have a white duct tape that I'm gonna use, but you can use silver duct tape, but just try to use a stronger tape than what we use to cover the plant. This is gonna stand up to a lot of force. So I'm just gonna add a piece of tape on the front and back covering up the jagged edges of the duct tape. So it's a little bit more aerodynamic. Okay, so now that we've attached the landing gear on the bottom of the plane, we're gonna move around the angles and get the proper angles for the landing gear. Just move these around, bend them, get them to what you need. Make sure the wheels sit flat and that they're not cockeyed. You want it to spread out a little bit. Okay, and then the last thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna run a cross brace across the bottom, reinforcing it, bend this one into a hook, and then same thing on the other side. Okay. And then I'm gonna just put a little dab of hot glue on either of these joints. While you wait for this to dry, cut out the other pieces of foam that are on the other page of the modifications PDF. And then I just cover these with the white packing tape, and then uh, we're gonna put them on the sides, just like that. Just gonna run a bead of glue down the middle, then on the larger side. No glue on the top. Gonna reinforce this a little bit. Then I'm gonna put the same duct tape on it as before. Okay, so now we have both of the foam pieces on the landing gear, as well as we taped up the sides so everything's nice and slick and aerodynamic. So there's the landing gear, it should be able to withstand quite a bit of force and uh, you're gonna have to do a little bit of tuning to make sure that the wheels roll properly and uh, that they don't severe off course. But anyway, one other thing that'll help with that is to protect the tail. Since this is a tail dragger, we need to put something on the back to help it along. So I bent up this little skid using the rest of the wire that was left over and I'm just gonna glue this in place right here. Be sure to let that dry before you do anything else. So you can see this takes the elevator off the ground and it also protects the tail and landings. So it is kind of important and it's pretty easy to put in. Next, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna add a bomb dropper to the bottom of the plane. This is really simple and you can drop parachute men, toys, and maybe even water balloons with it. To start off, you, these are the parts you're gonna need. It's really simple. All you need is an extra servo, a couple rubber bands, and a barbecue skewer. So let's start this. You're gonna measure or sort of eyeball it doesn't have to be super precise. Do the same on both sides. So now we're gonna open up our plane and we're gonna slide our barbecue skewer, make sure it doesn't get in the way of any wires, all the way through both of the holes. Now we're gonna add a little bit of hot glue on the inside where it comes out. Okay, once you have the hot glue on the inside, you can put the canopy back on. We don't need to go back inside. Choose one of the sides, it doesn't matter which one. And I'm gonna do it on this side, why not? And we're gonna cut off the barbecue skewer flush with the side of the airplane. So now that it's flush, we're going to install our servo. All you have to do to do this is take off the sticker first. Okay, now we have a surface to glue onto. We're gonna put some hot glue and we're gonna put it right here a little bit farther over next to it, but you want the arm to be over uh, in front of this seam. Cover the back side of this with hot glue. And put it right there. Now we're gonna run the servo up, and then we're gonna cut a little slot for the servo lead to go in. Grab it and pull it through. While we're inside and while we're waiting for that to dry, go ahead and plug this into the gear spot of your receiver. 
and we're done on this side. So let's move on to the next side. And we're gonna leave pretty decent spacing over here. Almost like the pegs up above. And then we're gonna add hot glue around over here. So this is what you want it to look like on the other side. Now we're gonna take a large rubber band and we're going to tie it over this peg. So we're not gonna lose it. So now we have our rubber band over here and it is complete. So now let's program the servo. Grab your transmitter and plug in the plane. So the way this is gonna work is when you flip the gear switch on the right side of the transmitter, the servo goes down. Now you want it to be resting in a state where this is pointing straight out perpendicular to the body and then this position is going straight down. So we need to reverse it inside a radio just like before. So let me do that really quick. So now when I pull this switch, it goes down. Now we need to position it so that the servo arm is going completely over to the side when we flip the switch. And when it comes up, it's gonna look like this. So the whole point of this is to grab your rubber band, pull it over onto the servo arm, and then when you flip the switch, it comes off. And it's as simple as that. Okay, so once you have this put together, all you have to do to drop something is place it on the belly, then wrap your rubber band around, make sure that the servo arm is facing outward, put it on the tip of the servo arm, and then when you're ready to drop it while you're flying, all you have to do is flip this switch back, and it drops. Now you do need to tune the um, servo arm, just cut it down to size until the rubber band stops sticking to it. And that's a bomb dropper. So you can put parachute men in this, you can even put water balloons, just be mindful of the strut inside here so that it doesn't get in the way. Now we're gonna program flapperons onto your airplane. These allow you to slow down your plane, but still have aileron control without having to add a separate control surface. So flapperons is a mix between the ailerons and the flaps to slow your plane down while it's coming in for a landing. Now the way that we set this up is I've just put on the wing and we have the two servos coming off of it right here. We're gonna plug one of them into the aileron port and the other one into the auxiliary port on the receiver. Okay, so once we have these installed, then we're gonna to go to our radio and then change a couple settings. So going into the menu, we're gonna go over to the setup and then we're gonna go over to wing tail. Now we're gonna activate dual aileron. I already have mine activated, but this is what we activate to do flapperon. So that mixes the aileron and auxiliary channels together. And then once we look back at the plane, we can see that when we move the aileron stick, the ailerons work as normal. Now you do wanna check the way that these are moving because this is gonna be important when we when the airplane's facing away from you, you move the stick and then that aileron should come up. So that's doing it for me now, which is good. If you have that wrong, then you can either switch the two servos in the ports, so you can switch the aileron and auxiliary ports, or you can go in and reverse the aileron inside of the radio. Just do a combination of this until it moves the right way. Now we're gonna set up the flaps. Back in the radio, we're gonna go into the menu and scroll down to flaps. Now we're going to go to land position, which is the down position of the flap switch. And then we're going to give it down about 75% or 50. It depends on how much you want. And um, you can do some experimenting to see how it slows down your plane. If we go back to the plane, we can see that our flaps just went up. So we do have something reversed. So I'm gonna switch the two wires on the receiver and see if that fixes it. Okay, so now that I flipped those two wires, now when I flip the switch down, the ailerons both go down and I can still control them with a stick. That's why they're called flapperons. Now, if your ailerons both go up, then your plane is gonna descend a lot faster. So this is just a way to slow down your plane while it's coming in for a landing, which is pretty important with the Maker Trainer because it does glide for a very long time. If you want your plane to be easier to fly, you can add a flight stabilization board. The KK2 board comes from Hobby King and it's $30 and it can be reflashed to do airplanes. Mike Murray has a really good video on how to set this up and plug it in and program it. Once the KK2 board is installed, then the plane will automatically compensate for the wind or other forces that are acting upon it. And then it can be switched into auto level mode where it can level itself. This could be a great mod for beginners. Now, before we move on, I wanna take a brief moment and explain how the modifications worked when I went out to go fly. 
After bending the landing gear and doing a couple test runs, I got the plane to roll pretty straight and the rudder compensated for any movement that it did have. Now something about the landing gear made the plane fly a little bit worse. Now I think it's due to drag because the weight and everything did not change and even with hand launching the plane it was a lot worse. Even with the flight characteristics aside, the landing gear were way too weak to land onto, and they ended up folding up every time I came in for a landing, except for like once. And all I had to do is rebend them back, but I'd like to land on my landing gear and taxi back to the runway instead of having to go get it every time I land, just like it would be if I belly landed it. Apart from all the other modifications, the landing gear did not work. Now the flap runs helped in both the landings and the takeoffs, and then the rudder helped with the ground handling and also in the turning when the plane was in the air. The bomb dropper was a lot of fun, I dropped a couple parachute men and some streamers out of it, unfortunately I didn't get any video of that, but the only thing that didn't work was the landing gear, and I'd love to see some of your ideas with it and see if you can make it work. Just experiment with it and see what you can come up with, I'd love to see. These are not the only things you can change on the Maker Trainer. I encourage you to add or remove anything you want. I purposely built the Maker Trainer to have a huge inside space to accommodate different modifications. And the last thing I want to talk about is FPV, and this isn't really a modification, it's more like a hobby inside of RC. FPV stands for First Person View, so this means that you have a camera on the plane and it sends a live feed down to the ground where you view it through a video monitor or video goggles, and then you fly the plane as if you were the pilot. There is so much to cover with FPV, and it could be a series in and of itself. And it is. Stone Blue Airlines, in conjunction with Alex Grieve, aka IB Crazy, put together a getting started in FPV guide, and it's fantastic. They cover the basics, and then they go over what you can do to get more advanced. FPV is one of my favorite things to do in this hobby, mainly because it's like playing a real life video game. There are so many branches off of FPV, such as flying through obstacles or setting height and distance records. It is pretty spendy, and you have to make a couple hundred dollar investment just to get started, but it can be very fun and rewarding. Speaking of fun, Flight Test, which is my favorite RC show on YouTube, teamed up with Stone Blue Airlines and they did an FPV flying wing obstacle course. And it's really fun, you should check it out. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. I hope Maker Hanger has helped you in getting into RC. But before I go, I want to point out some channels on YouTube that are pumping out great RC content and I think all of you would enjoy. The first is Flight Test. Like I said before, Flight Test is my favorite show to watch and they do tips and tricks, how-tos, scratch builds, reviews, and so much more. Next is Experimental Airlines. I use a bunch of Ed's building techniques on the Maker Trainer and he has a bunch of other ones that are like covering and building different airplanes so definitely be sure to check that channel out. Then we have Stone Blue Airlines. These guys do a ton of reviews and how-tos and they also do a bunch of stuff in FPV so if you want to get into FPV definitely check these guys out. And finally, my channel, BusyBTV. You can find it under my name, Lucas Weekly, when you search on YouTube, and I do reviews, interviews, scratch builds, and a bunch of other things to do in this hobby that you might find interesting. I encourage you to check out these channels, as well as search around and find what interests you in RC. I can't wait to see all your maker trainers and the modifications you do to them. Remember, there's no wrong thing you can do to the plane, just learn from your mistakes, and be sure to post pictures and video on the Maker Hanger community page. You can keep watching my videos over on my channel, and so I'll see a couple of you over there. Go make something. Bye.